Hi everyone, my name is Tim Brown. Today I want to cover a very easy to use website editor, WYSIWYG type interface, and believe it or not, it's made by Google. It's called Google Sites. Uh, Google Sites is arguably one of the best WYSIWYG editors out there. And when I say WYSIWYG, I mean what you see is what you get. It's a visual interface, very similar to say Weebly or Wix or Squarespace. Um, but actually the UI is so much better. And of course, it's free. So let's take a look. Uh, to Go to Google Sites, just type in sites.google.com and you'll see a menu of options up above and then all the websites that you set up down below. To begin, I'm gonna go ahead and just select one of the template options so you can get a basic understanding of how these sites are laid out. And you also get a sense of how you can then go ahead and customize these pages as well. Uh, so by default, you see here you have a header and then you have all these different uh, insert options including titles and paragraphs and buttons. And, and these are all layouts for photo options. And you can see they appear in various different configurations here. You can set these all up manually if you start with a blank document. What I'm going to do is explore the menu on the right hand side, and then I'm gonna to go to the menus up top to explore some of the more admin kinds of things. So let's go to themes. Themes basically represent font choices that you wanna choose for your font and any kind of color scheme that you wanna use. So you can just simply go through and just select all the different options here. You can see every time you select a theme, the color changes. And you'll notice too that you can add one other color if you want to. Uh, on the far right here where you see these little color swatches, if I tap on that, it's like a bucket tool. You can then go through and manually select another color that you want to add to the site. Next, let's go over to pages. So when you have the pages menu selected, you see here I already have some pages set up. Some are visible on the navigation bar here. Some I have hidden. So that's an option that you have when you set up a page. So when I select the three dotted icon here, you can see I have several options. I can choose to make that page. You can make any page your home page. So that's a nice option to have. Uh, you can duplicate any page. You can go into properties. And when you go into properties, this is where you can actually go in and customize a page. So if I didn't want this to be one word, but I want it to be like a phrase, I can make it anything I want. And let me bring up that menu once again. And you can see you have the option to add as a sub page the subpage actually comes with the classic version of Google Sites. Uh, the latest version is really designed for responsive websites, so you don't really want drop down menus when you're on your phone. Okay, now let's move over to the insert tab because that's where it gets pretty exciting. Under insert, you see you have a wide range of options to choose from as far as adding content to any page. You can add text. Usually what I do is I select the element on the page that I want to add the text below or above, and it'll insert it right there. And then you just go in and add your title. So I'll just type in Google here. With that selected, you'll see you have a little menu appear up above. You can choose to make it a, a title heading or subheading. In this case, I'll choose title. And of course you can adjust the position and so forth. Uh, you can add an image from a file. Uh, you can also add an embed code. Uh, so basically anything you wanna add, you just tap on it and it inserts it right into the page. So in this case, here is actually an embed that I added to my site from Ingenially. Uh, you can see here's the embed code here. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that for a moment. And I'm gonna select it and you see the little menu comes up. I can just hit the trash can to delete it. With that selected, I'm gonna go ahead and insert embed code. And you see you can add URL or embed code. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add the embed code. Uh, click next and insert and it inserts that right into my page. This is another great UI component. So you see I have a little move tool here. It gives me the option to move this around and you see a little line here lets you know exactly where that's gonna be placed and I can plop that right in. And what's really nice about the UI here too, you may have noticed that there's a little vertical grid, uh, sort of like vertical guides that guide you through the process. So with, with the element selected, you can then move your content to adjust the width and the height of what you're adding until you get it set up exactly the way you want it. And that's embeds. And of course you can add any file from your Google Drive, but you can also access those individual files uh, individually down below. Uh, you can choose from a wide variety of layouts. As you can see, it's pretty easy. All you do is just tap on them and then insert them right into the page, like so. Okay, let's explore some of the other menu options. So down below here, you see there's this option that's called collapsible text. 
This is a really cool option. What's, what this does is it enables you to add a title and then add a, a list of things underneath as a list of menu items, for example. So that when people go to your website, they will only see menu with a line underneath. And if you want to see the menu, then they just simply select on the arrow to reveal it. And of course, you can choose to deselect collapsible if you want all the items to appear. You can also add a table of contents. Now, this is really interesting. So when I tap and add this, you can see that automatically I get a menu by default. What this menu is actually referencing are the titles that I have set up on my page. So you can see here I have Google, I have the rule thirds, I have quiz. And then when you go to click on them, you will go automatically to those sections on the page. So it's a nice option to have. Graphically, it's not as interesting, but the functionality is pretty cool. You can add an image carousel. You can add a button to your site. Um, I actually have one down below. Uh, when you insert a button, it looks like this. And you have the option to adjust it to different styles in case you just want a plain text or a plain outline. Uh, you have three different options here to choose from. And with the button selected, you can move it around. That same vertical grid appears. You can add a divider line. You can add a placeholder. And not surprisingly, it's very easy to add YouTube videos to your Google Sites. I have one set up here. Uh, let me just go ahead and delete this. So I'll just show you how this works. So I'll just go ahead and just tap on the YouTube icon. And you're gonna paste in the URL of that video. I'll search for the video. You select it and then select insert. And it brings it right into your page. And just like any other element that you add to your Google Site, you can resize it just the width and the height until you get it set up just the way you want it. You can also add calendars to your site. I'm not crazy about the, the graphic layout of the calendar, but it is the functionality that comes built in there. Actually, I've seen it actually appear on, on other websites. So why not a Google site? So basically you just go to your calendar that you have set up and when you select the one you want, insert it in, and it basically comes in just like any other insert option. And of course, you can add a map to your site, which is incredibly useful. I mean, most other sites use it, so why not Google, right? Um, you can tap in, let me see here, Black Lives Matter Plaza. Okay, that's cool. Let's just say we were all heading down to a protest, but I wanted to be able to show you where we were going to meet. Um, maybe there's some people coming in who are not familiar with the area. You can insert that right into your site. And of course, you can make that map any size you want, so it fits into your layout the way you want it to appear. You can also add a Google Doc, which is a nice option to have. Typically, I would prefer to just link to it rather than actually add it to the page. But if you want a visual reference, sometimes that's a nice option to have. So you select Docs, it's gonna to go to your Google Docs that you have stored on your drive. You select the one you want and you insert that into your website. And it'll come in just like any other uh, image or video or what have you. And you just adjust it accordingly. In this case, I could make the document take up the whole page if I wanted to do that. Or in my case, I probably want to just set it up as a like little thumbnail for visitors to reference. And one option that I really like is the ability to add Google Slides. Uh, you're actually looking at a slide, a Google Slide that I have set up now. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and delete it and just show you how that works when you bring that in. So I'm going to select the title because I wanted to come in underneath this and I'm going to go to Slides and I'm gonna select from the slides that I have set up in my library. In this case, I'm gonna choose that one, click insert, and it brings it right into the page just like all the other elements. And likewise, I can adjust the width and the height of my Google slide. Of course, what's really cool about this option is that people can now play the slideshow right inside your website. Okay, this next feature I am super, super psyched about is the ability to add sheets, and charts to your, your sites. And the reason why I'm excited about this is because of an unexpected thing that I discovered. So in my case, I'm not gonna actually choose, choose a sheet, I'm gonna choose a chart that's inside one of my sheets. And I'm going to set up this page almost like it's kinda of like a dashboard. So as you can see here, I have two charts that I pull from two of the sheets that I have set up on Google Drive. And I'm gonna go ahead, instead of selecting sheets, I'm going to select charts. And what it's going to do is list the charts that are inside the sheets that I have set up. So in this case, I haven't used this one yet, so I'm going to select that and then bring that into my page. You're going to select it and then add it to your page. And what's really nice, again, I discovered this by accident, but you can actually set up your charts 
like a dashboard. And what's really cool is, you know, if you're sharing this with your team or whether it's just information you just want to share with the public or whatever your purpose is, this data gets updated in real time. Every time you update the data in the sheets, those charts get updated. Pretty cool. Now, this last option may seem like a no brainer, but yes, you can add forms to your Google sites. I mean, everyone else uses it, so why not use it in a Google site? Uh, what's really nice though is Google Forms are really quite flexible. I mean, not only can you just set up contact forms, but you can set up quizzes. Uh, so be able to, to be able to build these right into the page, really nice option to have. Uh, as you can see here, I have one already set up. Let me go through the motions and just add it from scratch. So I'm going to go to Forms. And what it's going to do is basically access all the forms you have set up on Google Drive. You select that form you want, click the Insert button, and it just adds it right into the page. And once again, just like any other widget that you add, you can adjust the width and the height so that it appears exactly the way you want it to appear on your site. Okay, we're now going to go ahead and move up to the more admin kinds of things. So let's go to the top menus here. Uh, the first obvious one is the big blue button, which is the publish button. This is how you publish your site. Uh, Google also integrated this cool feature where you can preview what your site looks like before it's published. This is a really nice option to have. So let's just go ahead and publish the site. So when you publish a site, what it's going to do is give you a view of what currently, what it currently looks like on online now and what it looks like if you decide to publish. There's one thing that I'm missing here. I noticed that I included a little button above my header before, but I disabled it because I was practicing for this tutorial or review uh, and removed it. So I'm not going to publish it right now, but this is a nice option to have. The three dotted icon basically just gives you access to some basic information, report a problem and so forth. But the feature that I really like that, that really has functionality built into it is the version history option. So if for any reason you need to go back to an earlier version of your site, you can just choose from the dates below. Now I'm going to move over to the settings icon. With the settings icon, you have some admin things that can be really useful. For example, let's start with navigation. Uh, with navigation, you can choose to switch from top to side as far as your menu options are concerned. And what that does basically is give you a little hamburger menu, the kind of menu that you automatically get when you're on a mobile device. You can have that appear on your desktop version as well. And then you can also choose to not have your header transparent. So right now my navigation bar appears over my header because it's transparent, but you can make that header white or you can make it black. Under navigation is brand images. Brand images is where you can add your logo. This is where my logo appears here in the top left. You can also add a favicon. A favicon is that little icon that appears in the browser tab. So if you look up here, that's Google Sites favicon. You can add your own for customization. Viewer tools are just icons that appear when your viewer visits your site and just some general information that they can see about the status of your site. Of course, you can customize your URL so you actually own a domain name. You can add that here and you now have official domain attached to your Google site. And what's nice, if you have an official domain name attached to your Google site, you can then add that to Google Analytics. You cannot do that to the default name that you're given without a domain name. So that's just something to keep in mind if you want to integrate Google Analytics. And finally, you can add an announcement banner. This is basically that little space that was above my header that I showed you earlier. Uh, it basically is a way to promote something that you want people to see right away, uh, which is why they call it announcement. So if I activate this, you'll see here that I had a button set up for classes available. So I was alerting people, hey, you can sign up for this class. Um, I use this for that particular function. Oh, and by the way, the announcement feature will only show up on the home page. So it's going to be the first thing that people see when they go to your site. And with Google Sites, you can actually share your site with anyone and or you can choose co-editors who you want to share the site with. Maybe it's a group of people who you want to edit the site together. You can choose that. You can also choose to not make your site public and just choose to share with a few people. Obviously, since, obviously, since you can set up as many sites as you want, you can choose a different option, uh, choose a different configuration or permissions for each site independently. And here's just quick access to a, a copy link function in case you want to quickly share a link to your site. And here is a preview option. I love this, this option here is probably 
one of my favorites because you get to see exactly what your site's gonna look like when it gets published, which is really nice. Uh, but you can also see what it will look like on different size devices, which is really, really convenient. Um, and they make it convenient by putting this little menu down here in the bottom right. So here I can get an idea of what it looks like on a tablet and or on a mobile phone. So it gives you a sense of what that UI looks like as well as the visual appearance in those different formats. And when you're done, just click the X to go back to the editor mode. And last but not least, you have the undo and redo buttons. Of course, that really comes in handy in case you're rushing and you wind up deleting something by default. The undo will just restore any kind of mistakes you made. So yeah, overall, Google Sites is really fantastic. It has a beautiful user interface a lot of content integration. Uh, probably the one app that Google makes that has the most integration in terms of using all of other Google services and integrating them right into the site. Really nice option. I would have to say that Google Sites is arguably the best app that Google makes and, and definitely my favorite. I mean, if you haven't explored this, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, you don't even need this tutorial. It's, the user interface is pretty intuitive. You'll figure it all out yourself, but I hope this was helpful. My name is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you like it, like it down below. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and stay tuned for future updates.